I got a couple little geometric stamps I'm gonna put together. I've had a lot of people asking my kind of process for just getting the liner on there and sewing them. And I do do a few things just to kind of prep the leather um, and get everything ready, mainly just skiving down this bend area right here because a lot of times your snaps aren't really long enough. And I use nine, 10 ounce as my main body of my belt and then align with three, four. And if you, do, if you don't sky this area down, it's just a little bit thick for the snap. So I'm gonna show you how I do that and sew a belt up right quick. All right, so here's our belts, and this is going to give you kind of a, a good sample of what, what we've got going usually. But here's the paper. This is the just poster board that we put on the back of 99% of the belts that we tool. We'll use some poster board and just prep that belt for tooling. That keeps the belt from stretching, um, either widthwise or lengthwise, and it gets your tooling a lot more crisp. Because if your leather's smushing around, and this this is 910, is you know thin down to 910, so it's got more of a chance to stretch and misform, and so you'll, your belt will kind of get a little wonky. So we put poster board back there. It's glued in with contact cement. It stays in to the, you know, it's in the finished belt. I have had some people ask, how do you get that off? Don't get it off, just leave it on there. It's not gonna hurt anything. If anything, it gives the belt a little bit more body and prevents that belt from stretching out as bad. And on a belt like this, this is just a tapered belt. And on these sometimes, especially if I'm just doing a geometric pattern, I will just use blue painter's tape. And you could do that on all your belts, your floral belts, whatever you want to do. You could just use blue painter's tape. Um, I think the poster board works better, in my opinion, and I like the body that it gives the belt when it's finished. So I prefer that route, but I do use blue painter's tape when I'm in a hurry. Or if it's just a simple geometric or something like that, it's fine. I can just use that. It makes it a lot easier at the end because you can just pull that painter's tape off. A little trick when you're pulling the painter's tape off, if you will just hold it and pull very par parallel with what the with the belt. Don't pull up like this. On a belt, it's not so bad, but if you're pulling it off of say like a little notebook or something, it'll rip a lot of times. But if you'll pull very e parallel with the belt like that, it'll also, it won't rip. And then you also won't, if, if your belt happens to still be a little bit wet from tooling, you won't stretch it because sometimes that stuff sticks really, really well and you end up stretching the leather. So I'll pull it off in short segments like that, pulling parallel with the belt and it comes right off and leaves it, leaves it a lot better shape. Okay, so like I mentioned, what I do is, is try to sky this bend area just a little bit because that's where you're gonna fold and put your snaps. And so 910 plus 3, 4, um, most of the snaps I get, that's really, really tight. You can make it work uh, if you forget to and you sew a belt up, you can make it work with snaps, but a lot of times those snaps won't hold real good. They don't clench down really well because the material's too thick. So I like to pull this down to where we get closer to about a six ounce, maybe seven, eight ounce, something like that would work fine too. So we're gonna do that right quick. One of the first things that I do is just spray it, spray this area right here with a spray bottle of water. You don't have to do too much. You just need a little bit just to moisten that. And remember, whenever you, if you'll add water to your leather that you're skiving, a lot of times it'll skive a lot better. And so we do that quite often. But that way too, you don't, as you're skiving, you're not stretching out the bend of your belt. And because we and we don't need to soak it, you don't need a lot of water. You just need enough to get just a little layer off of there. Because we're not taking it down to to nothing or feathering it. We're just trying to thin this area down. And that right there is about just right. So you can see what it, the thickness it originally was here on the left, and now the thickness on the right that it is. That's, I would say that's probably seven ounce, somewhere around there. You just wanna take a little bit off. If you get it too thin, this bend's gonna stretch out and get wonky, and the integrity of the belt is really critical here in the bend. So you don't wanna take too much off. We just wanna take enough off where it's easier for our snaps. And it'll also fold nicer over the buckle. Now this is a tapered belt here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Now on your tapered belt, you need to be in mindful of what kind of buckle's going on here. And if you're doing it for a custom buckle or a, a nice Vought buckle or something like that, with a, like a Ranger buckle with a double keepers or whatever it's got, it's really, really nice to have the buckle set in your possession when you're building the belt. Because I have taken a bunch of these belts apart when the customer comes in to pick it up with the buckle, the belt's too thick and it won't won't fit through when you put the keepers on there and then try to pass the other end through 
it's still all too thick to fit through the keeper because some of the, all the keepers are different heights. So I like to have the buckle set in my shop so that I can put that keeper on there with a little scrap piece of liner, put that and then put a scrap piece of liner and check and make sure that those two will pass through each other and also that the width is right. Some buckle makers, they cut them an inch and then they actually, by the time they get through welding it up and finishing it up, it's actually like 15 sixteenths and then your belt is dead on an inch and it won't fit through and it's rubbing the side so if you do a nice job of slicking your edges it ends up marring your edges up and so i really don't like that so i always like to have the buckle set if at all possible on a ranger style buckle that way you've got the keeper the tip the buckle everything to make sure it all works because there's nothing worse than getting a good belt built and then going in there and having to take it apart and open it up to try to thin everything down after the fact and it's not the buckle maker's fault. Everybody builds a little bit different. You may be cutting your belts a little bit over one inch, you know, on your tapers or something. And it's just, you want all those parts to, to work together well, like they were made to work together. And if you don't have the buckle, I would suggest on a tapered belt is to at least just take just a hair off of this side here. And we're gonna wet that too. Sometimes that'll skive without wetting it really easily. But I'm gonna go ahead and wet it because this one I don't want to take too much off I don't want to take as much off as we did on the other end I just want to thin this down just a touch because this belt's going to hang on the wall for sale so we're going to go ahead and thin it it's better for it to be a little too thin than too thick because too thin it'll still work on the belt there we go now it's just leveling that off just a little bit so now both of those are ready to be lined all right, my cut bench is kind of a mess. We've been working on saddles, working on some belts, just trying to keep some projects going as we're getting settled in here and stuff. But here's a bunch of those poster board liners. I cut them one and an eighth inch. If you if you haven't checked out that little ebook that we did or, or seen it on some of our blog posts or whatever, but I cut that about an inch and an eighth. That gives you a little clearance on the outside because you don't want the paper sticking out of your liner once you trim and sew and everything. So you want it narrower than the belt. But anyway, I just cut a bunch of them. I'll take a whole sheet and then I'll just take my my uh, little strippies, this little wooden strippies, and I'll take that and just strip it up. I had a subscriber that actually found one of these for me. Uh, I think he found it in a box of stuff and he sent me one. And so I actually have an extra one, but I haven't given up on this one yet. So anyway, we're going to put this over here for now. My cut bench usually looks like this. During the day, we're working on stuff. That's just how it is. Now this is a piece of a side that's three four ounce herman oak and so that's my lining level and usually what i'll do is i'll get a, a side of this and i'll cut it just like i do when i cut my belt sides and i prep them so i pull about 60 inches or so maybe a little bit more if, if i've got any real long belts to make and then i'll cut the neck off straight edge the back ready to go a lot of times i'll cut the butt off too on my liner just like i do on my belt sides but sometimes I'll leave it. It just depends on what projects I've got ahead of me and how fast I think I'm going to consume it. But you don't want to waste a bunch of little pieces of the inch and a half or whatever that you're cutting on your belt. So same thing with your liner. But that's three, four ounce. You can see it's real soft. All right, so we've already cut a bunch of liners off here. I usually keep one of these on my bench that's up underneath here that's just ready to go for a liner anytime I need one. I'm going to take this strippies and I'm going to set it at an inch and three quarter. That's going to give us a little bit of feather on the outside of the belt. You don't want to cut your liners an inch and a half and try to meticulously line them up. Always cut your liners anytime you're lining something, cut it wider. You can cut that excess off after you sew it. So we're going to set our strippies at one and three quarter inches wide because these are one and a half inch belts. And I'm just going to cut two strips of this and then we'll go glue it onto the belts. All right, so there's both our liners. Leave that sitting there for now. We'll go put these on. Okay, so we got both our belts here. One thing that I would suggest you get in the habit of all the time is every time you set a belt down, whether you're tooling it, cutting it, sizing it, lining it, whatever you're doing, get in the habit of laying it left to right. So bend to the left and then your tip to your right because that's the way the belt is gonna be worn on the person. And so always get in the habit of doing that so that you don't inadvertently sky the wrong end or put the initials on the wrong end or whatever you might be doing, always put it down that direction. That comes in real handy too when you're doing these liners. I like for the butt end of my hide to be at the tip end of the belt. I'll lay my liners neck end down here and butt end to the, to the tip. 
that just it, it's just kind of a small thing it doesn't really matter a whole lot but to me it does because the, this end the tip end is going to have all the holes that's where your stretch is going to come from you want the best part of the leather to the whole side not the bend side just something kind of that i do and then i'm going to square up these ends i'm just going to square that up a little bit and i'm going to do my first one we'll put the liner down there and then we're going to set the belt on top of it i like to leave just a little bit of an overhang out the front so that you're sure that it's on the liner when you glue it down and then i'll cut this one just a little bit past the belt tip or belt bend so that way i know that's the right length same thing on this one So now we're ready to put glue. We're gonna do two coats on each piece. I think two coats is better. Your first coat usually just gets absorbed. It's not super sticky. It's kind of prepping the surface. Second coat is for stick. We'll go ahead and put two coats on all this. We'll put one on, let it dry. Put another one on, let it get tacky, and stick them down. Go with our second coat. All right, so now this is tacky, so now we'll just, if you lay them out like that, you know which belt goes with which liner, so you don't get them confused, because I've stuck the wrong liner on a belt and get to the end and have it too short, and especially if you've got paper on there, it's really hard to rip that out and without tearing stuff up and wrinkling the leather, so always be sure you keep that, keep that straight, and then we'll just line them up, and you can see how much easier it is to line up your belt when you've got your liners cut just a little bit bigger. You know, we only cut them, this an inch and a half belt, and we cut it an inch and three quarter. So it leaves us a little bit of a feather where we can, we don't have to be as meticulous lining it up. and just get it run straight down the center. That's good to go. We'll give it just a little bit of a press, and then we'll go to the next belt. And a little bit of a press. Now we'll go to the bench, and we'll hammer them in just a little bit. All right, so this is what I like to do anytime I'm gluing, anytime I'm gluing anything up is I like to take a nice flat faced hammer and just lightly tap them together because what that's gonna do is make sure that that contact seam makes a good bond and everything sticks really well. And uh, if you don't do that, that liner can walk around on you a little bit. If you, if you prefer, you can also take a glass slicker and just run down the back of the belt thing you got to be careful about is make sure it's stuck good the first time because if you get a little spot that walks up then you can uh you can squash a wrinkle in that liner and that's kind of kind of not good you know it's not gonna look real good on the back side of the belt plus it can it can cause a little stitching stitching mistake too all right so we're going to set up our stitch line here with the, this is just a horseshoe brand groover you can use any groover that you like but we're going to go in there and you want basically your stitch line at center of your border and so we'll just go there and we'll groove you certainly don't have to groove especially with a cobra class 4 the way that machine stitches and as good as it stitches you really don't have to groove i groove my stitch lines because i think it gives it a more professional look and it's just kind of something as a saddle maker that we're sure to do all the time is to groove our stitch lines. And so on my belts, I just feel like that that comes through on those as well. And I think it looks nice, but you certainly don't have to. If you'd prefer not to, not to do a stitch groove, then there's nothing wrong with that at all. And so now we'll do this one. purpose of the groove is going to be just to keep those stitches below the level of the leather and then they have less of a chance of rubbing off. Um, honestly, the belt's going to wear out before the stitches, before that nylon thread gets rubbed off. Um, they may still be wearing the belt when that happens, but the belt probably should have been gave up on years ago because 
belts don't typically get oiled and cared for and maintained. They just get used. And so they get dry and nasty, especially if a man works outside. Both of these are going to be more of just like a kind of work belt style. And so they're probably going to get tore up and abused. So they're definitely going to wear out quicker than, than say, a really nice floral tooled belt with, with paint or dye work. But now we'll go sew these. They're ready to sew. Now, like I said, we've thinned down the bend. So you'll notice how much nicer that bend will fold, even with a liner on there than what this would if you, this is going to be really hard to fold and to put snaps in so that's why we thin that down on both of these so now we'll go sew these on the machine all right and so i've got my stitch length on this machine set it's it's at the four this cobra class four up here where you set your stitch length it's on the four but it's like right at the bottom of the cross piece of the four just kind of play with yours and, and adjust it to get it to the stitch length that you want it's not really that crucial I just like a shorter stitch length on belts. Now I don't use a guide when I'm sewing belts on a machine. If you wanted to use a guide, your Cobra's guide for this machine, um, Stitch guide is very, very nice. It slides on here. It works out great. It moves out of the way very easily if you need it to. The reason I don't uh, with that particular guide, the Class 26 has one that drops from the top, and it I love that guide. That guide is really, really neat. It just sits above and sits up against the material. But on this one, it slides along the bottom. The reason I don't is because of my feather, and I prefer to have the feather versus the guide. Um, if you have that, that little piece of leather hanging out, it'll cause your material to push out because the guide's pushing on this leather because it sits against this plate. And so for me, I'd rather have that little bit of feather because I'm stitching very close to the edge here because this material's not super thick. And if you've got a little bit of a feather, it keeps it from wanting to drop down into the hole in this bottom plate. And it seems to stitch better with a little bit of, a, of, a, of an overlap or a little bit of an edge like this. And so I prefer to leave it and not use a guide. If you're using a class 26 and you've got the guide that drops down, I would imagine it would work much better. But if you want to use the guide on a class 4, then you can certainly trim all this excess off after you line the belt. I would still cut your liners inch and three quarter and then line them. And then once you get it glued really good and grooved, then cut this uh, feather off and then you can sew it because it's glued it's not going to move anyway you should be fine but i just prefer to do it after i stitch so All right, so on these belts, I overstitch when I get to the bend. I'll start here at the tip, go down, come back, and when I get here, I overstitch three or four stitches. That ties everything together, and then I just cut them stitches off flush with the belt, and you won't ever see them.
So the next thing what we would do is we'd go ahead and trim off this excess liner flush with the body of the belt. We'll go ahead and sand them, edge them, slick them. I'll use a number three edger on my belts is what I use. And we'll do that and then slick the edges, let those dry, and then we'll come back and dye the edges. And then at the end, I'll put the snaps on. That's usually how, how I do my belts. The snaps are the last thing to go in, take pictures, and ship it out. Usually on my belts, these are both just little work belts. So all we're going to do is an oil finish. I think on this one, I'll probably dye his brand black real quick. But other than that, we're not doing any kind of antiquing or anything like that. If that's the type of belt that you're making, you really don't have to do anything before you stitch them. If I'm doing a floral tooled belt that's two-tone brown and got some paint and stuff and we're going to antique it, I would do all of that finish work before I line them. That keeps this liner clean because if you go ahead and make this belt and then antique it, you are going to get antique on the liner. And so it's just really kind of a pain in the butt. So I do all the antiquing, painting, dyeing, any of that type of finish work. We're going to do that on the belt before we ever line it. And so by the time you line it, your, your belt is technically done. It just needs liner stitches and snaps. But these are both work belts. We're just going to oil them. I'm going to oil the liner anyway. We're not, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to put them together. So again, just kind of keep that in mind. If you are going to antique, do all that before you put your liners on because they look a lot better when you don't have antique stains smeared on the back side of it or anything. So guys, that's lining a belt. It's really easy. Like I said, just wanted to do that real quick tip, mainly to show you how much I thin down the bend area. I think I've mentioned it before, but if you haven't been doing that, that'll really make assembling your belts a lot easier and setting those snaps a lot easier. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.